What's up guys, hope everyone is doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some quick updates for Bitcoin. I'm gonna go ahead and get it started here. First off on this daily chart, as I've been mentioning, talking a lot about the bearish divergence we've been getting recently, um, specifically from around this top to this top, and then the hidden bullish divergence from this low right here to this low. Realistically, the hidden bullish divergence goes all the way back to the low we set at $15.4,000 approximately back in November. Of last year we can see that as i went over recently the lowest drop in rsi relative to the most recent drop we've seen was lower than not only going all the way back to march um, when we did below this 200 estimated moving average back here printed the pink vector candles as well and also when uh, we got rejected off the 50 ema right here the blue moving average going into the what uh so far now is the lowest load around 15.4 thousand back in November of last year. Um, but first off, again, so then bullish divergence here is the point. Um, on the daily, we can see that none of the candles have closed below right here. So that kind of more micro hidden bullish divergence is still validated currently. If we quickly go to the two day here, we can see also have not gotten that candle closed yet to validate that more micro, that shorter term hidden bullish divergence three day as well. We go to the four day, this is the only, going all the way up to the weekly, six day, seven day, etc. Right here, the four day, the previous four day candle did close below the candle we saw back here. So according to the four day, the sit and bullish divergence is in a sense already invalidated. Although, um, let's just assume here for a second that because of the hidden bullish divergence or for whatever else reason, the price is gonna go up. Um, from here, at the lows we've already set, um, it's really uh, technically, doesn't have to be an invalidation. This is, like I said, it's only on the four day. Um, and is, for example, I mean, if we spike up from here and continue to go up somewhere like that green path that just on the chart, something like that, then for all intents and purposes, that hidden bullish divergence is still, in my opinion, would still have been played out there after seeing bearish divergences. Um, and then if I go to, let's see, the five day, you can see that our current candle put a day 18 hours left. It could close below, it could not. We look at the six day here the six day candle is already below the candle back here in june um, we haven't closed it yet we have three days 18 hours left so that couldn't end up happening and like i said the seven day basically looks the same as the six day and then the weekly can is obviously still going to look the same it's still it's kind of odd how if you look at the seven day chart and then you look at a weekly chart they, they look just a little bit different um so if i go back to the daily here like I said, I wanted to point out this hidden bullish divergence a little bit more clearly on the RSI. This goes all the way back to the low of November, around 15.4 thousand. And you can see drawing this trend line, that it lines up with this area right here, right here, and right here. And the chart this lines up with, again, 15.4 thousand to the next set of pink vectors right here in March. Um, it ignored these, RSI didn't get oversold enough right here, and then fast forward to currently we can see this kind of almost triple hidden bullish divergence playing out here. If I get back to the weekly real quick, um, to on and on the way that I have. So if you look down here at the RSI, we can see I'm using the, you can see the RSI forming in this channel. This represents kind of a linear, more traditional way to look at a, what we see up here. Top bearish divergence and bullish divergence right here. I use these curves to note them as well. Um, like for example, I mean, we could totally just fall off the deep end right here and go even lower and validate that hidden bullish divergence. That would generally line up with, like I said, either, let's say maybe we bleed in as late as November. I'm personally thinking right now towards as low as 20,000. Just hold at least, you know, maybe seeing some wicks down to 19,000, maybe even some very drastic wicks, kind of like the March crash down to 18,000. So I'll touch on that here in a moment. Um, so when it comes to the price and the RSI breaking out, all this seems to be lying pretty heavily right now. In the short term, around approximately 29,000, give or take like $500. 
I think that'll roughly be kind of the pinpoint price when we see price will start to break above that, obviously, and then we'll see the R start to see the RSI, you know, encroaching above this around uh, 52 and heading above around 62 right here at the, uh, the upper portion of what this resistance on RSI, the bearish divergence has been so far. Um, this chart right here on the daily basically sums up everything that I was going over. Like I said, entertaining it down. Worst case scenario, I think um, bull market, or bull, right, let me start over the bull market. I think personally, all things considered, as already began, I think the bottom of the bear bull market support is somewhere in this red box. Um, but if we look here at this time tool, we can look at this the uh, 200 EMA, this white moving average, we can see the cross ball of it briefly back here in around March. Um, and we went down, or at least went down further below that, around 10.18%. Uh, we crossed below the 200 EMA again recently, similar to what I went over prior. And if we go down to the same percent, 24.5 is basically where that's lining up. We could see that in a wick. If we see that in bodies, uh, the candle's getting down there, then like I said, you could you know kind of call it, uh, I suppose, the, the hidden bullish server is being invalidated. But as long as it holds that, even though it closed a little bit below it, me personally, at least, I, all things considered, I would just look at it as the hidden bullish divergence playing out. Um, Outside of that, let's say we do come down to the black or the blue box, uh, assuming the local low hasn't already been met. And for example, we would just slowly kind of just move up from here. Maybe we'll go sideways for a little bit and then move up, but the local low has already been met. If we hit the blue box, uh, I mean, it uh, could look down to the orange box. If we hit the orange box, 22, 23,000 23, approximately, we could see some looks down to the red. And then, like I said, Red box, worst case scenario, down around 19.3. We could see some wicks down, I think, possibly as drastically down as uh, approximately 18,000. That lines up with the midpoint of this daily candle, this W pattern that broke us out of the macro falling wedge we've been in for nearly roughly two years at this point. We came and we found support on it back here in March. We've been entering this this uh, this like 12 month uptrend at this point. Um, it really seems more so that things are leading into some sort of a bull market transition rather than we would be heading down, you know, below around, uh, you know, 15.4 thousand when we hit prior to this. Um, and the segue off that, if, as I went over this chart in my recent video, each of these moving averages we see, these are, it's a combination of estimated moving averages and smooth moving averages. We see the, the hill and the green and the black, once they cross below the purple and the red, that's roughly halfway to the bear market. Then we get the pink vector candles to print. We see the same thing happen right here. That's 2014, 2015, 2018, 2019. We see essentially the same thing. So you fast forward to currently. We also see the same thing right here. Now we are outside of going back to this area right here. Um, closest in history to actually seeing um, the type of cross that we see back here at each of these around halfway into the bear markets. Um, once these cross, it really kind of ensues uh, more of uh, a major um, bearish volatility towards the downside going back into the history. But um, if we were to, or if Bitcoin were to go below 15.4 thousand, I would not start to lean towards that as being a pretty likely scenario until we see the, zooming in here, the again, the, the yellow or the green, the yellow and the upper black moving average. Until all three of these have crossed below the red and the purple again, this is the monthly chart. Until that happens, I see no good reason whatsoever to even entertain or think it's uh, possible that Bitcoin would go below 15.4 thousand um, at this point. Outside of that, here at this six day chart, I just wanted to quickly point out this is pretty inconse inconsequential. Um, at the end of the day, I don't really think this matters that much, but um, with respect to my phase cycle theory, how I personally see Bitcoin projecting out into the next bull market, again, like I said, I think around 220, 245,000 for the next bull market peak sometime around the heading of next year, specifically roughly April um, is what is most likely. And I decided to draw this ABCD pattern on it and taken from the low back in March of 2020, 64,000. That's A, B, we go down to C right here. It's not at the low, so this could be some sort of, this is a rough exception, perhaps it's, you know, obviously why it's not necessarily accurate, but um, it's drawn roughly to the low right here. Also, the way that I do have this drawn, 
acts as a nice kind of median of this downtrend we've been in. You see right here, obviously minor rejection until we broke above it, support, support, broke above or below, and then we got rejected throughout this bear market bottom. We made this type two or um, type three double bottom right here in this range that I'm circling. And when we carry that out to, again, like I said, what I think specifically is projected, we see the 0.786 and then the 4.613, or well, 0.787 or 4.613 is basically 0.786 and 4.618. I just found that rather interesting to see. Definitely nothing, I would say, insanely um, weighty when it comes to actual technical analysis, but I thought it was interesting nonetheless. Um, but to sum things up real quick, like I've been saying, I don't think anything will go below 20,000. Uh, maybe seeing some links down to it. Where's 18,000 at this point? I think if it goes that low, it would happen before, no later than, you know, end of January, or, or my bad, end of November of this year. Might bleed into December, but I think at the very, at least all things considered, uh, Bitcoin is most likely, rather than not, to set new highs next year. Also given the halving, whether or not we, you know, bleed for a, you know, into the halving down to 20,000, and then things finally pick up after the halving, which is antithetical to what I think is going to happen personally. Um, but nonetheless, whichever scenario really seems to be taken, uh, whether we get some sort of, you know, pre-having or at having bull top or, you know, post-having um, top or, you know, just breaking the previous all-time high, 2024 in general seems like it's going to be a very good year for Bitcoin and crypto in general. Um, but all that being said, again, none of this is financial advice. By all means, don't listen to me. Come to your own conclusions and make your own decisions. But hopefully you enjoyed, hope you're able to learn something, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Ooh, I, ooh, I